My name's um, Stuart Hamblin, and this is um, uh, an exercise sequence that I've um, developed and which I try to do every day. And the reason I do it is because I just feel fantastic afterwards. Um, it can be made shorter, it can be made longer, it can be made more complex, it can be made more simple. So I'm just going to show the routine, kind of routine that I do. Um, and uh, you'll see that it's based a lot upon my Feldenkrais training. Um, I'm also a Pilates and yoga teacher too. So here goes. <clears throat> uh, and um, the one thing that helps uh, is to have a slightly slidey surface. I have a very nice mat at home which um, enables me to, to slide quite easily. It's probably a little bit more difficult on a traditional yoga mat. And you might need to place a sheet or a, um, some kind of surface that enables you to slide. So first thing, lie down um, with the knees bent. And then I begin just by bringing one leg in close to the um, chest. And this is just to stretch out my hip flexor muscles. So um, keep one thigh close into the chest and then just lengthen out um, through the other leg. And then um, bring the other leg in, transfer the hands, bring this thigh close into the chest and then stretch out um, the other thigh. And then um, from here, bring both legs in. This is very much a Feldenkrais rolling type exercise. Take hold of the feet, so thumbs and fingers together, rather than a, um, a, a pinch grip, thumb and fingers together over the top of the feet. And then first of all, I just begin to play with the balance. Just begin to roll from one side to the other, just nice and gently. And then you begin to make this more complex by stretching out one leg and then the other, pushing through into the hands, just going from side to side. And then from here, begin to really stretch out into one leg, come back, and then into the other leg, and come back. Again, you begin to make this more complex by bringing both legs into the equation, come back, and then to the other side, and come back. And you can do this as long as you like, really. It's such a nice thing to do, just to, from side to side towards the ceiling. And once I've uh, had enough of that, bring the legs down and then stretch out one leg. Keep the other one bent. Find a good place, a good solid place for the foot. Have the opposite arm out to the side. And then with the other hand on the chest, you just begin to reach across the other arm, reaching towards the other hand. So you have to soften in the chest. And then you can press through the other foot to help you bring the two hands together and even a little bit beyond. Looking towards the hands and come back. Again, just do this a few times. I'm trying to keep this knee looking towards the ceiling rather than it coming over to the side. So you get a nice opening in the hip joint and come back. Again, just a few times. And then um, to begin to make this more complex, you can begin to take the arm uh, that's out to the side a little bit higher and you begin to reach and turn to look. And you can again take it higher and higher. So you begin to get this nice extension into the back. And then come back. And then you do that on the other side. There's a hand out to the side, this foot standing, you begin to reach. So first of all, it's about softening through the chest and the ribs. You keep this hand that's reaching in contact with yourself so it's not up in the air and reach and come back and then again and then begin to take the arm higher and higher Good. and then higher and one thing I also like to do this is once this arm this arm is lengthened out you have this hand out to the side you see how my head just rests on this extended arm? I just begin to bring the head forward of the shoulder and then behind the shoulder, just taking it forward. So you're really rolling over that underneath shoulder, trying to keep length in the back of the neck. And then once you've done that, come back onto the back, cross. Um, so for me, it's the right leg over the left. Have the left arm out to the side. It's sort of um, reaching away from you, and then you just begin to tilt the legs off to the side, 
and back to get a nice twist in the spine. It's not this one isn't so much about rolling to begin with, but really just letting the belly be soft, trying to find the floor. <laughs> and keep going. And then you can begin to take this more into rolling onto the side and you try and turn to see the hand that's reaching around in a circle. And then you bring it back. And then again, just begin to tilt the legs. So I'm not dropping the legs. I'm always have them under control. Uh, reaching the arm round. You get a nice extension in the back. And then again, just a few more. You can do as many of these as you like. It just feels really good. And come back. And then we'll do the other side. So left over right. Uh, right hand out at shoulder, uh, reaching above the shoulder. Again, first of all, just begin to tilt. So initially, I'm just looking for a twist in the spine. I'm not looking to lift this shoulder and again come back, just letting, again, the belly be free. And then once you've done that a few times, you begin to take this further into an extension. Come back. And again. Good. And come back. And I'll just do one more so it feels good. And come back. Good. And then come back. Now I begin to do more abdominal work, but slightly different from the traditional abdominal. So again, I cross right leg over the left, have um, uh, both arms down by the side to begin with, just tilt the legs to the right, again, just some way they can be comfortably. So here I'm keeping the opposite shoulder down. I bring the right hand behind the back of the head, and then keeping the elbow sort of looking towards the ceiling, just begin to fold in the ribs and then come back. It's probably, you'll find it's easier to do this on an exhalation. The more you let the breath out, the more the ribs can soften. And again. And then pause. Again, you can do, you know, as many as you like of these, or as few as you like. I often do this sequence as uh, I can reduce it into about 15 minutes for a warm-up before a class. So the other side, again, hand behind the head. Exhale. And again, if you use the eyes to help you, it will help you to find the folding in the ribs and the chest. And then once more, good, and then release. So come back, once more cross the um, right leg over the left. Tilt the legs just somewhere comfortably to the side. And now, first of all, I have the arm reaching up towards the ceiling. So not straight up towards the ceiling. I begin to reach up and then let the shoulder come back down. So just reaching up. Um, you can perhaps see that what this begins to do is allows the chest and the ribs to soften and then you just change the angle of the reach. So each reach just does something different to the ribs, not just on this side, but of course on the opposite side. And then finally the hand comes down by the side. Again, I just reached out different angles to get all this softening and movement in the ribs and the, and the chest. Really again, letting the belly be free. Just different angles of reach. Come back, do that on the other side. It's effectively, you're just giving yourself a, um, a lesson room. Have the arm up to the ceiling. You can just begin to reach up. Notice how the collarbone is moving, the ribs, the sternum. Each angle just asks something different in the, in the ribs. and then come back. So, once more, with the, initially have the legs bent, cross the right legs, the right leg over the left, tilt the legs once more to the side. This time, interlace the hands behind the back of the head. And first of all, just begin to look up towards the ceiling. So just resting the hands in the back of the head. And then I begin to tilt the, um, everything, my arms and the head. The head is just a passenger towards one side, come back the side, come back, and then to the other side. So again, you probably perhaps see how it really is asking movement from the ribs and the spine. And then you can begin to go from side to side. And then to make this more complex, um, again, you turn the head first of all, toward, look towards one elbow, and use your eyes to help you. So first of all, you begin to slide looking down, and then you begin to slide and look up. So down and up, down and up. 
and then pause, turn the head to look towards the other elbow. Um, so it's not a movement in the neck, it's really it's coming from your trunk. And again, just begin to slide and reach. Slide reach. And come back. So do that, just do that on the other side. So left leg is crossed over right. Tilt the legs just somewhere comfortable to the side, checking you're not holding the breath. And then head looking towards the ceiling, first of all, just go from side to side, side to side, and then begin to use your um, eyes looking towards one elbow, looking down, up, Good. and then turn the head to look towards the other elbow, so again it's a lot of movement in the trunk and the ribs, Good. and then come back. So at home I'd probably do a few more of those, but it's just to give you an idea of the exercise. Sorry for showing my tummy. So now from here, I'll begin uh, more of a sequence for the legs and the, and the hips. So fold one leg in towards the chest. This time I have my hands behind the back of the thigh. And then just stretch the leg up towards the ceiling once. Fold it in. So you're folding in the hip, the knee, and the foot is just nice and relaxed. And then stretch it up, trying to touch the ceiling with my heel. So you begin to just lengthen out the back of the leg. And the third time, hold it there, and then begin to just turn the foot on the end of the lower leg. So really trying to push the heel away from you. Do three in one direction, and then three in the other. Good. And then from here, uh, you can use your hands to help. Just turn the leg out in the hip if you can. Bring the foot to rest on the other thigh. And then this hand, I'm just, with the right hand, right palm just on the inner knee, I'm just saying to that knee, you can stay away from the right armpit. So I'm not pushing it, I'm just giving it that clue. Then take it back up, fold it in again, just giving the clue to that knee to stay away from the armpit. So you begin to open out the hip joint, and press it up a third time, and then fold it in. And then here, again, all the time I'm thinking of this knee just lengthening away from the armpit, but this foot I'm trying to keep quite active, so it's not a sickled foot, trying to keep that ankle um, sort of strong and then I begin to tilt the legs over to the side as if to bring this thigh to touch the floor the floor on the right so you can see how it opens out the hip joint on the opposite side it's a bit of a twist come back just do two more this direction come back and then third time all the time just thinking how that thigh can lengthen away come back and then begin to go to the other side as if to bring the sole of the lifted foot to the floor on the opposite side. Again, thinking how that knee can lengthen away. Come back. Keep, um, for me, keep trying to keep my shoulders down, so not rigid, but just letting them be heavy into the floor. Come back. And then a third time, inhaling, and then exhaling to come back. Now, from here, I just fold the legs in towards me, keeping this shape. Interlace the hands behind the back of the thigh, or the head of the shin, and then fold the legs in towards you. And then with this elbow, I just encourage this knee to again just keep away from the armpit to get that opening in the hips. And then release. So do that on the other side. So first of all, I like to do things in three. So once, fold it in, twice, fold it in, and then a third time just pressing it up, circle the ankle, the foot rather, on the end of the leg pushing the heel away and then just reverse that good and then from here turn the leg out trying to turn it out in the hip joint to place the foot on the top of the other thigh stretch it up fold it in and then third time stretch it up and fold it in so again I'm just not pushing this knee I'm just giving it a sense of how it can the distance from the knee to the armpit can um, stay the same. I begin to tilt the legs as if to bring the thigh to the floor on the right, on the other side, come back, and again. You can begin to make this more complex by turning the head and eyes in the opposite direction, using the eyes to help. Once I've done three to that side, and then do three to this side. All the time, again, just thinking of that thigh lengthening away, so I get this lovely opening in the hip joint, come back, and then the third time, back. So from here you fold the legs in towards you, 
If you can, you can interlace the hands behind the back of the thigh or the head of the shin. I lift my head and shoulders to do that, but then see if you can put the head and shoulders back down. Careful not to shorten through the back of the neck. So you try and keep the chin slightly in. It's a nice stretch for the head muscles or release. Then a release. Now from here, I have one of these um, bands. I like to use the ones with handles for, for this. And I use a green band. It just gives me enough tension. So um, you can also just use a TheraBand without the handles. Bring the band around the sole of the foot. Uh, cross the handles over. And then try to keep the elbows um, into the side and down on the floor. So before, um, when you do these um, leg exercises, I try and keep the wrists nice and strong so that it's not the band controlling the wrists um, I'm, I control what what happens to the wrist so if that's difficult you can keep the hands resting on the chest but otherwise have them um, pointing up towards the ceiling and then first of all I just press the leg away into the band at an angle and then fold it in as I press it away I'm trying to allow this area just to be heavy into the floor so I'm not arching in the lower back. I'm just keeping the trunk nice and soft and heavy into the floor. And then a third time, press it away. And again, when, you, when I'm pressing into the band, I'm looking for resistance as I press it away and resistance as I bring it back in. So I'm not pressing and, and just dropping it, it back in. And equally, if you have a tendency to hyperextend in the back of the knees, be careful not to snap into the band. So you're just looking all the time to reach into the band, come back. Now from, after I've done just the straight pressing away, fold it in, stretch the leg up towards the ceiling, reach it long and low, be careful about the wrists, not to touch the floor but just to hover, fold it in, lengthen up towards the ceiling, stretch it down, fold it in and stretch it down. Okay, you can do as many of these as you like, but uh, keeping it quite short. And then reverse that, so you scoop down and out, not to touch the floor, but just uh, above it. Lengthen up towards the ceiling, fold it in. Press it down and out, up towards the ceiling, fold it in, and then scoop it down and out. Once you've um, lengthened it up towards the ceiling, now I go straight down, keeping the leg in parallel, and straight back up. Again, just be careful that the, the, you control the wrists as opposed to the band um, the band, band doing it. And then um, after I've done a few of those, you can begin to pick up the pace. It's a nice movement um, for the back of the leg. And then pause, turn the leg out, and then begin to reach down and come straight back up. And straight down, come back up. And then you can begin to change back into parallel and turn out. You can begin to play with the angle of the leg. But again, you'll notice that I'm trying to keep this all kind of soft and heavy. So I'm not arching, just keeping that all nice and soft. Okay, once you've done a few of these, then pause. And then if you can, take the arms out to the side, uh, um, sort of just below the line of the shoulder. I turn the palms down. If that's difficult, you can keep the hands here, but try and press them down. You begin to get a nice stretch in the hamstring. Um, if the leg, if you can't keep the leg long at this height, then just have it somewhere where it can be straight. Um, but then from here, now if it's okay on the back, you stretch out the other leg. And then you can begin to tick-tock the leg a little bit from one side to the other. Just a small movement to begin with. So working the outer hip and then the inner hip. And then you can begin to turn this into circles. Okay. Looking to keep the trunk nice and controlled and then you can reverse the direction and you begin to make the circles bigger but again I'm not looking for a lot of movement in the trunk just trying to do it in the, in the hip. Once you've done that, pause, just enjoy the stretch and then do that on the other side. So first of all, just press away, come in, press away, come in. Careful not to arch the back to keep it all nice and soft. From here, begin to do this cycling action so you fold it in, up and away. You're always looking to control the band rather than the band controlling you. And then reverse. A few like 
this, and then straight down and straight back up. Straight down, straight back up, and turn the leg out, and then a few like that, and then you begin to alternate into parallel, turn out, down, parallel, turn out. And there's lots of things you can do with this band. You know, they can do more complicated exercises, but I'll just keep it simple. And then once you've done that, you stretch the leg up towards the ceiling. Again, this might be enough of a stretch. If you can, you take the arms out to the side, you begin to lengthen out the other leg, and then you begin to do, well, first of all, tick-tock to the side. And then you can begin to turn this into circles. Okay, you can make them bigger, as long as you're controlling the movement. And then reverse. And then pause. Um, uh, you won't need the band anymore. So now I come onto the front. And um, then from here, um, um, uh, I have my uh, one hand on top of the other. You can do this with the hands separate to begin with, but if you can have one hand on top of the other. And then first of all, I just rest my forehead down on the, on the backs of the hands, and then begin to move the head towards one elbow and then towards the other elbow. What tends to happen here is that people just do the movement in the neck and there's very little movement of the shoulders. So as the head goes to one side um, and then to the other, can you see how my shoulders begin to join in the movement? So, um, and then also how the pelvis, pelvis, if you begin to allow the pelvis to move, it's more the spine, the trunk, and the chest moving the head rather than it all being done in the neck. And then pause, turn the head to look towards one elbow, and then again you begin to slide the um, face towards one elbow, letting the shoulders and the pelvis all join in, and then the back of the head towards the other elbow. Just going from side to side. And then you begin to include more of the leg action here. And then, once you've done that a few times, pause, rest the face on the backs of the hands, and then slide the arms and the head as if to meet the one knee, and then come back. So again, you slide and come back. And then once you've done that, then you can stay with the elbow towards the knee, and then you just play with how easily can you move the head towards one elbow, and then the other. And again, it's a lot of movement in the ribs and the spine. You can begin to take this more, so rolling the head into an extension, and then come back. And again, so just so looking all the time to be as soft as possible in the ribs and the shoulders and the chest. Come back, and then do that on the other side. So you turn the head, if possible, slide. Do that a few times side and then you begin to move the head on the arms and the great thing about this is it really begins to get this part of the spine spine moving and then um, to finish off normally what I do is I um, turn the head to look towards one elbow I fold the um, legs um, so the soles of the feet are towards the ceiling keep the legs glued together and then I begin to tilt the legs to the side and come back. So again, not looking to drop the legs, but always under control. And do a few in one direction, come back, turn the head, do a few in the other direction, and come back. So it's a twist, twist in the spine. And then you can begin to make this more complex. So I'll keep my face turned towards my left elbow, begin to tilt the legs behind me and then go carefully begin to tilt the legs in the other direction so it's a more complicated twist twist going on do a few window wiping from one direction to the other come back turn the head the other direction from side to side and then once I've done that just bring the hands by the chest onto all fours and I just like to finish off by just stretching out the back And then that's it.